And joining us now, we've got the racing manager for the Anthony and Sam Friedman stable out of Melbourne. We've got uh, Brad Taylor, who we know pretty well here in New Zealand. Brad, how are you doing? Very good, Aidan. How are you? Good. You're, you're out of the farm at the, at the moment. How's that track work gone this morning? Yeah, pretty good. Um, you know, nothing too serious on a Friday morning. We get most of our serious gallops done on a Tuesday here, but um, in a pretty privileged position. Got a lot of nice horses heading into the spring, so it's uh, easy to get out of bed and come watch these horses at this time of the year anyway. Absolutely. Uh, one of the reasons we call you, because we're in lockdown here. How's the family back home? Yeah, good. We're obviously in lockdown here. Um, obviously, Jane and myself are pretty lucky we can still go to work. Um, obviously, Jane's only working a couple of days a week now with our young one, but um, no, we're in a pretty lucky position. You know, you feel sorry for the people that are, are locked down at home fully, but um, obviously in our in our jobs, the horses still race, and over here we're still racing every day, so still got racing, which is um, makes things a lot easier. Absolutely. We want to get through uh, the Valley Card because uh, there'll be a few New Zealand punters' eyes on uh, Melbourne this weekend. A uh, kick off in the first with one that goes around the Cambridge Stud Colours, uh, Zuzarella on debut. What can you tell us? Uh, she's been well talked about over here. Um, she's been well backed in the in the thousand guineas. She's a really nice filly that we've got a lot of time for. Um, obviously, it's it's not our usual path to kick them off in town. Anthony's always been a believer of taking them to the country and get that maiden out of the way. But um, this race came up quite small on on Wednesday morning, so we thought we'd have a a throw at the stumps. Um, again, she's been well backed here. Her trials have been very good. She ran second at the trials the other day behind it. Uh, Black Caviar's daughter, Invincible Caviar. Um, she's a filly we've got a, a lot of time for, and um, you know it's never easy going to town first up. There's a couple of race winners in there, and um, Kieran's horse won a maiden really impressively the other day at Chuka and, and uh, the good old runner at the top. Um, he she won really well at Mooney Valley a couple of starts ago. So. Um, Yes, yeah, she's in good order. She's a, a, a filly we've got a, a lot of time for and got nice ability. Um, but as I say, it's never easy to win first up in town. But um, we'll give her every, every opportunity and hopefully she can do it. Okay, you, with her being on debut, just take a, a little bit of the mystery away. Where will we see her in running? Look, she's drawn a, a middle gate. Um, we don't ask them to be up on speed their first start. We sort of just let them um, educate themselves at the races. So we'll just let her, you know, where she finds it comfortable. Hopefully she's got a you know, a bum to follow somewhere and, and not back too far. The rail's back to the, the true position for the first time uh, in a couple of meetings. So I, I would dare say that would probably favour those on speed early. But, um, you know, if she could lob in the 1-1 or outside the leader, it would be ideal first up and, and, you know, she could put herself into the picture. OK, uh, I think we can move through to, to race five for your next one. Uh, just as soon as uh, a, a Japanese import who's been pretty good at sand down in the last couple too. Uh, how's the progress been since? Yeah, she's flying this mare. Um, she's taken a long time to mature and develop. Obviously, being the Japanese breed, she's six months behind the others. But um, she's going really well with this preparation. She's had a few hiccups, but she's just so tough. Um, I think leading into her first one at Sandown two starts ago, she'd hardly had a saddle on her for six weeks. Um, she spent a lot of time with the, the local water walker here, and and she um, and, that, and that seemed to suit her. But she's um, done really well since her last one at Sandown. Um, hopefully we get a little bit of rain today just to take the easing out of the track there um, and you know most horses handle the valley track she step, has to step up and grade and the 2500 will be no issue for her she'd, she'd just about go another lap in Mooney Valley so um, she's in good order um, this is obviously a step up in class there's the nice uh, White Road Lodge bred one there of Kieran's at the top of the page it'll be hard to beat it was a very good winning run there the other day um, but she's in good order she runs well she tries hard and she'll put herself hopefully somewhere in the finish so does she make it three in a row? Fingers crossed, that'd be ideal. Um, it's never easy. It's She's a mare that's probably surprised us a little bit. We probably didn't think she'd even get this far. But as I say, she's the, the improvement she's made just uh, in the last six months has been unreal. She's She's been in work since, since, since September last year. And I think she's ran every month since November or December. So um, she's handling racing well. And she's, you know, typical of that probably Japanese breed that just handled being in the stable rather than being out spelling. So... Um, you know, if she can take the step up and grade, she's, there's no reason why she's um, she's not over the odds. At, I think she's at about $15 over here. Okay, nice. Uh, moving on to race six, your next one. Your front man, not the New Zealand front man. This one uh, went around in Stakes Company last time out in Brisbane. Uh, it's been fresh and since, but did trial at Cranbourne around second that day. What did you make of the trial? Yeah, really nice trial. Um, he's a horse that's got nice ability, um, albeit still a maiden. He's... Um, Ran second on debut to a horse of Peter Moody's. It's uh, a stakes winner and ran really well in Sydney during the autumn and some of those Group One races. So, 
Um, we are just going to have a look at this race. We we might just hold him back for a, a maiden on uh, Wednesday at Sandown with him being a maiden. So um, we'll just get our form guys to go over it and um, give get their opinion. And yeah, he might just wait for another day. Um, you might see him on Wednesday at Sandown in a maiden. Okay, yeah, uh, moved you to race seven. You've got Starcaster, uh, another import. The resuming run for third looked to have a, a lot of merit uh, at Mooney Valley last time. Now, w- what did you make of that and how's horse progressed? Yeah, he's going really well, this horse. He's flying. Um, I think he's over the odds for, for tomorrow, albeit um, Jamie Carr has picked the favour in the race. Um, though in saying that, that horse is sort of best formed on the soft tracks and, and with blinkers on, he's got blinkers off tomorrow, which is interesting. So um, our horse will put himself right on speed. Hopefully he can lead from the from the inside barrier tomorrow. Matthew Cartwright actually knows him really well. He does a lot of track work for us and, and rode him in a, a Terralgan trial the other week. So... Um, you know, he's probably, he's going really well. He, he loves Mooney Valley. His form around there is super. He just found the 1,600 metres too short, but came home really well the other day. So um, I think he's over the odds at $9. I think he, you know, he can run really well tomorrow. Okay, and uh, your last run up in the meeting is Groundswell in race nine. Last up, Flemington win was good. And uh, what about the progression of the source? Yeah, he's come on really well. He was 60 days since his uh, last run before that, so he had improvement to come. He'd come home from uh, Queensland and, and freshened up really well. So um, he's improved nicely out of that race. Uh, he's probably another we might scratch yet. He's drawn 14 or 15 at Mooney Valley, which, and he's an on-pace runner. There's a, a lot of speed inside him. So um, there's an open 1,400 next Saturday uh, or a Group 3 1,400 uh, in Adelaide next Saturday. That will probably... Save him four, and then he can go uh, next up into the uh, Sir Rupert Clark, which should be, you know, he'd be a, a really good chance in a race like that. He races really well at Caulfield, and um, he'd drop down to the minimum there. So, um, yeah, you'll probably see him next Saturday, uh, either in Adelaide or here at, at Caulfield. Okay, uh, outside that, you've got other weekend runners away from the valley. Uh, what's one you could maybe steer us towards, Brett? Uh, we've got probably two really nice chances. There's one tomorrow at Wangaratta in race four, I think she is, a horse called No Crying. She was well-backed on debut and just disappointed a little bit, so we um, tipped her out and gave her a break. She's returned in really good order. Had a couple of nice trials uh, leading into this. Um, she'll be hard to beat at Wangaratta tomorrow. And then a horse on Sunday uh, called Maybe the Best at um, Sale, and I think it's race seven, the 64,000. Uh, she's a, a mare that had a lot of issues as a young horse and only came to us last preparation. Didn't think we'd even get to, to the races, but just improved right through the preparation. And uh, She did a really good job winning impressively on debut and then running uh, sec- uh, third in town at her second start at, out of a good form race that the form stood up. And uh, I think the winner of that race won at Flemington or Caulfield a couple of weeks ago. So um, she's a filly that's returned in good order, tried really well at Cranbourne the other Monday, and she should be really hard to beat down there. Okay, like that. It's actually uh, race eight, just so that we're making sure punters are going to the right race on the on the website. Um, just just tell us also um, what's coming up for the spring that you're most excited about. Who, who are the young horses, especially that are getting you keen? Uh, oh, the one that's probably the easiest to get out of bed for is a gent here, the horse out of Princess Cope uh, by Frankel. Uh, I think she's a a really really top class filly. Uh, she's favourite for favourite for the thousand guineas. Um, You'll see her try. She'll have a jump out at Mornington on Wednesday, and then she'll run the Atlantic Jill first up. Uh, probably follow a, a exact same path we did with uh, a horse called Shoals a few years ago. Um, she'll run third up into the Thousand Guineas, and then we'll probably have a crack at the Maya if she was competitive in the Thousand Guineas. They get 49 kilos this year, so she'll be really hard yeah. to beat there uh, with that on her back. And um, you know, she's she's a pretty top quality filly that uh, we saw on debut win at Flemington. A uh, horse that's probably just jumping out right as we speak at Flemington now is Atorius. He's the Blue Diamond winner. Uh, he's he's in really good order and um, also lucky to have uh, Rima Flowers. Uh, she won the Andrew Rams and so she's got the free ticket into the Melbourne Cup. She's just a, a slow maturing mare that um, thinks returned in really good order. This preparation her trial the other day was very good. You'll see her in the Fian at Mooney Valley on uh, the 4th of September. Um so yeah, there are there are a couple of nice fillies and one where I've been lucky enough to have a share of myself that won on, on um, Friday. A horse called Devout Hero. She's uh, going really well. There's a few names you'll probably recognise in there: Marty and Catherine Henderson, and uh, a few of the Racing.com team, um, Brent Sarafa and Nick Ashman, and and Grace Ravage and the team. So uh, there's a bit of banter going around about it, but it won impressively <laughs> uh, the other day, and hopefully we can get her to the thousand guineas. That'd be quite nice.
Gee, that's that's exciting. That's really cool. Uh, just tell us as well. We have got you uh, at the at the farm track, uh, and you've also got the the, the base at Flemington in, in town as well. How do you sort of split uh, your time and, and work out who's going where and who's best suited to 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 you know preparing at each venue? Yeah, so we've got um, fifty boxes down here. We're we're right beside the beach, right? looking over the computer here, watching the ships roll into the harbour. Uh, nice. so the beach is right there. Um, we, they, they all start their preparation down here. So Anthony's based at, at the farm. Um, we're very lucky at Flemington to have a foreman called Steve Adams. He's been with the Freedmans for 19 years, so he knows the systems inside out. And Sam and myself sort of just float between the two stables. So they all start their preparations down here. Um, and then, you know, they most of the runners come out of Flemington. So um, so like a horse like a Taurus, he's running next Saturday. He went to Flinton yesterday, trials today, and then he'll stay up there to run, and then we'll come back down to the farm. Um, they sort of come straight back down to the farm after the race and have a few days out in the paddock and a few easy days. So that's how it sort of works. There's a lot of movements rotating in between the stables. It just keeps their minds fresh rather than sitting in the same box for a whole preparation. So it works to our advantage, but you see a lot of the stables here in Victoria now have those those double bases and they're fortunate enough to have the, the farm bases, which is a big asset keeping these horses up for a long time. You know, you look at the stables that have just got the Flemington stable or, or Caulfield or those such, the, the horses are sort of stuck in the boxes for a lot, you know, the whole of the preparation. Whereas down here, they can go out to the paddock during the day where five minutes to the beach and, and that sort of thing. So it works really yeah. well. And, you know, some horses don't appreciate the Flemington environment. So they stay down here. So like horses like Agentia, she's, She's only ever had the one preparation at Flemington, but she races out of Pinecliff. So, um, yeah, we cater for each individual horse's needs, and it works really well. You know, the horses that tie up, they spend a lot of time. So, um, yeah, having the two bases is, is a big advantage. And as you can see with a lot of the, the stables over here, there's more and more getting them. So, um, yeah, no, it works really well. And we're very lucky to have this property. It's state-of-the-art. You know, you, there's probably not a place like it in Victoria. It's... It's worth well over a hundred million dollars, so um, yeah, it's it's incre incredible, and the people that see it are, are, are mind blown by it. So yeah, oh, wicked! It must be a real proof working out of there, and obviously a great insight uh, for us as well into how that uh, operation works. Really appreciate your time, Brad, and best luck for the weekend. Uh, hopefully, there's a winner or two uh, that you've mentioned. Thanks, Aiden. Cheers.